Morning, everyone. Good morning. Everybody stand up if you can stand. Also, good morning to be here. Father, we bless you this morning. Thank you for your goodness and your pleasure over us. Thank you that when we ask questions, you, you have the ability to answer us. And you also encourage us, you encourage our hearts for the day. Father, my prayer is that each one of us would be encouraged in our heart, that hope would arise within us, hope would rise up. The things that need to be dealt with, Lord, just Father, you will deal with in our hearts as we bring them forth to you. So Lord, we bless you this morning in Jesus' name. Oh, 
Yours
This is what you do. This is what you do. You make me come alive. This is what you do. This is what you do. You make me come alive. This is what you do. This is what you do. You make me come alive. This is what you do. This is what you do. Come alive. 
You know, I have sang that song so many times, and just this morning, like I caught that tell in where it says, it's your breath in my lungs. I think so many times we get burdened, we get weighed down, and we forget who is in us, who is breathing um, life through us. I, th I think, um, I was thinking actually even last week, like, you know, so much is going on in the world, and there's so many things that can, like, just weigh us down. And the Lord is here to give us refreshment. And you may not even realize your burden. I was, I was thinking my niece, when she was little, she was kind of puny, kind of got sick and whiny and whatever. And when she was about eight years old, um, they discovered she had a heart defect. So she went in, she had the surgery. A couple weeks later, she was bouncing back. And, like, she was like a different child, like her personality had changed. It was, she was carrying something she didn't even know she had. She had this weight on her that she didn't even know. She didn't realize her fullest potential. And I don't know about you, but I know I do that sometimes. I'm walking around carrying things I don't need to be carrying. I have a freshness and I have a refreshment that Christ has for us. So I don't know. I just want to encourage y'all, everybody this morning, like lay it down. Even if you don't know what it is, like God, give me your refreshment. Give me the joy. Give me the peace. All the things in this chaotic world that we're in right now. He has so much for us. Look at for those things. I mean, they're important. Be thankful. Even in the little things. So, Zach, will y'all go back in and just do that last little bit? So, Father, we just come to you this morning, God, just asking for that refreshment. Father, just laying down all the burdens that we carry, because you tell us we don't need to carry them, Father, that you're there. You're our yoke. We're tied to you, God. So, God, I just pray for each person listening this morning, God, that they will just, just take a deep breath in. And know that we are breathing you, Father, and that there's a refreshment that is just released over all of us, God. We just thank you. We thank you for this morning. Amen. You can take a minute and get, grab some coffee, and we'll get started back in here in just a second.
All right, everyone, let's get started. I'm going to try to get you out on time, but I don't promise you. And if I finish before, if you finish before I do, then you're welcome to slide out. Oh, it's good morning. Worship was beautiful this morning, amazing. It's always good to like just drink in that place of the Lord, especially like I was when you came up here to do that part on the second part. I was sitting there thinking, gosh, I hope she says go back into that song. I hope she says go back into that song. I almost was going to put my hand up and go like this, <laughs> and you did it, so it's great. So real quick, just to introduce ourselves in case you're new, Mark, this is Mark, Mark Tippett. He's the pastor, and I am Ovella, his wife, and um, this morning we're going to be getting into, in just a little bit, um, a little about kind of where we came from and where we're going, but we're just so glad everybody's here with us this morning at the refinery, so. Yeah, so the purpose this morning is, um, it's going to be online too, so if anybody misses it that you know that needs to listen to it, um, you can refer them back to it. Um, Our goal is, is to just kind of set vision. Um, for the next year or so, and just set it and say, this is where we're going, this is what we're doing, so that everybody's clear, so that you can catch something and you can run with it, um, So because, you know, the easiest thing is on Sunday morning is to get up and not be committed to something. Can everybody agree on that? Yes. <laughs> Amen. Because it's, and so, as we release this vision, we're going to talk more about belonging to something than attending something. Um, and so as we move forward, it's going to be more part of belonging than attending. Um, and so what we want to start with, we want to start with our history and a little bit so that we can kind of tell you where we came from and kind of tell you what God's still doing with us. Um, because I'll tell you in your own personal lives, as he plants things in your life, um, he's going to stay with you. And, and even when you give up with it, he's going to stay with you on it until he sees it come out how he wants it to come out with you. Um, so when, if he's planted something in your life, even as I get into vision this morning out of Habakkuk, um, we're going to get there a little bit. Even as, even as I get there, you can begin to take those same principles and put the, pull them over into your personal life and go, what is it that the Lord has called me to do? Can I write it down clearly? Do I meditate on it daily? Do I think about it? Or am I going through life and just reacting? And so... You can kind of unpack that as we get there. But, Ovelli, why don't you share a little bit with us on our backstory? Um, okay. Well, um, just to give you a little bit of our history, um, Mark and I were both on staff at another local church here in Wilmington, and we'd gone to a conference type thing. And the very first day, in the very first session, I walked out and I looked at Mark and I said, I think we're supposed to plan a church. And he looked at me like I had three heads on, on, on my shoulders. And I was like, okay, maybe I missed it. I don't know, whatever. And so we kind of chatted about it a little bit, but that was it. And then just kind of tried to put it on the shelf. And within that next week, we returned on a Thursday. And that next week, we had just four, four or five, like, affirmations yeah. of, no, y'all are on the right track. And so we, you know, we started talking about it, and it really became a um, an act of obedience. I really felt like if we don't do this, we are in direct disobedience to the Lord. And I was like, I don't want to be end up like Jonah and be in the belly of a well. Let's let's do this, even though I was like, God, you really could have done this 20 years ago when we were a little younger. Why are we doing it at this point in our life? Like all the things. And I yeah. was like, anyway, but so. So yeah. when was that? That was... I don't know. You always ask me this. May of, well, I want to give context. It's like, okay. like, it's like May or May of 2013, April, okay. May of 2013. Right. And so, so we started about August or so. Right. So in July, we started meeting just kind of like at our house and having um, coffee. We are all about eating, as you've noticed, and coffee and being in each other's homes. So it's, if we meet like this morning is the first time we didn't do like a buffet and, I'm, and somebody walked in, they said, I feel kind of like naked because I'm not carrying my food in this morning. I was like, I get you. I was like, you could have brought it anyway. We'd have eaten it. But yeah, um, for sure. anyway, it was Marilyn's rolls. So if you've had Marilyn's rolls, you, you know what I mean. 
Um, so anyway, so we started meeting. But the thing, I think, from the beginning, like uh, Kenny asked us on Sunday, he said, why, why, did you, why did you leave to start the refinery? And honestly, initially, it really was just a prompting from the Lord. But I think um, as we began to kind of like talk about it and move into it, it was really about discipleship. And that's when we, we were kind of like talking about our, you know, like our mission statement and all that. It, I think from the very beginning when Mark and I began to really grow in the Lord, it was always about mentoring and discipleship. Like we've, all, you know, my kids have grown up with people in our home, like mm-hmm. all the time. And so it was something that was really on our heart and we would talk about it all the time. I felt like we modeled it pretty well. Um, but it just didn't seem to, to catch through the year, even, I mean, as, even as we started the refinery. And so we were meeting corporately, but it was still something that was very much a part of our, our heart because we just feel like so much change can come when you're, you know, one-on-one or one to five or six or, you know, whatever, and, and you're building that community. And you, then you know people. You know them throughout the week. We've been leading small groups in our homes Ever since I, I mean, for the last, I don't know, twenty yeah, plus 20 years, years least, I don't yeah. know, a long time. So anyway, I mean, that was kind of like where we came from. It was not that we were trying to set out to do something new or radical or anything else. It was just we really value family. Mm-hmm. We really value being together and people growing. It being introduced to the Lord, you know, and then helping them grow in the Lord because. You know, I think Mark can share his experience. Like, he um, got saved, as we say in the Southern Baptist, um, when he was 18 at my church at a revival, and no one discipled him. So he went for a long time. Yes, yeah, so all like you this. people who are getting like input from me on marriage and all the other things, you're getting it because I got zero. Mm-hmm. Please, somebody tell me that. I should ask this question to my wife a different way, or somebody tell me I should do something different. Nobody's telling me anything. It's like crickets. And I'm going like, come on, somebody's got to say something. I mean, literally groping in the dark for the light switch, going like, how does this work? And so our our heart for this is to continue to release vision to, I mean, we believe so much in the fact of, just pure discipleship growth and how we input and being known one to another. This is something that not a lot of people maybe want. Not a lot of people may want to be known. Um, You may want to come into a setting and not be known. You may want to come into a setting, maybe I'm an introvert and I don't want to really be known. Or I want to be known, but I don't know how to be known. Or I want to be known and I want to be quiet in the setting, um, which is perfectly okay. But I think part of this for us is that We so believe that the best way to disciple is to be in the homes. Um, It's just to be together. Um, Is it going to be the most convenient thing? Anybody raise your hand if you think it's the most convenient thing. Nobody is raising their hand. If you've hosted things in your homes, you go, that's not convenient. Like, there's nothing convenient. It's more convenient to come here than it is to go to a home. Um, but the benefit, the character of the Lord and how he gets displayed. Huh? I said we lost one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look, 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 that's, that's good. We're, we're weeding them out. I got one back. There's two back. But the benefit of the Lord, the, his character, when he was with his people, he was either breaking bread with them. He was either pulling the children around and having a conversation with them. He was either... And so he's always doing something in that context. Yeah, we were talking about this with our small group on Wednesday night, and, and I think it was small group, or maybe it was a, a meeting. But anyway, um, Jesslyn had said, you know, like, and obviously we're working towards talking about gather groups here, which, um, but she was saying, like, I just feel like it's just such a great expression of God's love for us and, and then, you know, and, and who he is, a great expression of his personality of, like, you know, he was the one that didn't deny the children, let's bring the children to us. He was the one that, like, went and had meals with those that other people wouldn't even approach. He's the one that, like, sat down with the three and then the 12 and, like, poured his life into them. And, and that's our desire. That's what we want for every person in here 
and then to spread throughout, you know, all of Wilmington. Yes, okay. uh, yes, I still have a picture, and uh, I'm going to stay with it. I even had it in seminary. In seminary, I always I was studying church planting in, in seminary, so I've always wanted to continually plant something, and I studied the, the church models over in China and different places like that, and you would, you would see things, and I've traveled to all those places and been a part of uh, all sorts of different kinds of fellowships, and it just seems to be within our DNA that um, this is kind of who we are. Um, and it's not even, um, that's why we, we, we still gather once a month, but who we are is together outside of here in order to be missional and to be empowered and purpose together in a, in a gatherings as we move out through the day. So Habakkuk chapter 2, let's look and see what he has to say here. Um, if you want to take a few notes on this, it'll always, it'll also work for you and just, this works for anything. If God gives you a vision, this works for that. So if you're in business, um, if you're in education, if you're in school, um, if you're married, whatever it is, he'll, he'll say, okay, he'll say, what, what is it? He, you can apply this to that. So back at chapter 2, a little backstory on this is it's in the mid-500s um, B.C., and what's going on here is we've come out of um, a prophet has our Josiah King has come in, and he's reformed everything, and everything's really good. And then now we're on a downgrade, and lawlessness has kind of hit, hit all of um, Israel and Jerusalem and all around. So we've got lawless things going on, and Babylon is on the rise. And there we're overtaking Egypt and Assyria. And so all that's happening there. I mean, you can think of where we are in the world right now and what you know information-wise. The same thing that's happening today in a different context was happening like right here in 550 B.C. And so this thing where Habakkuk asks, in the first chapter, he's asking all these questions. He's going like, Lord, what about this? Lord, what about this? Lord, this and this and this. So he's asking all these questions. How many of you have asked questions? Like I ask questions all the time. Lord, what about this? This seems like you have to be coming back if this is happening. And it seems like every generation has that same thought process. But he answers it, and he says this. Go to chapter 2, and this is what Habakkuk says. He says, I will stand by my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. And so he's basically standing there and saying, Lord, I'm, st I'm standing here. I'm going to listen. I'm going to wait until you speak. Now, it's different than living life from a reactionary standpoint. If you live reactionarily, that means that when you wake up, you just react to whatever's going on in the day. And so you're not playing offensively in your life. You're playing defensively. You're just trying to protect whatever's coming at you. So an offensive position wakes up with something to look at and something to go towards. And so offensively, you wake up going to grab something or going to chase after something as opposed to defensively waking up and reacting to things. So I would say a pause right here. If all of you are in your businesses and what you're living your life, what you're doing in it, is go back and go, what's the vision the Lord's put within me right now in my particular business or whatever I'm doing to move forward? Because that's going to be the thing that you're going to find life in is the hope that he's breathing into those places. And so often we lose vision and we lose hope, and we get pummeled by what's going on in the world, and we're not above it, we're in the midst of it. So, verse 2, chapter 2. Then the Lord answered him and said, write the vision. So this would be like, write the vision down. So, number one, what you do, you would do in your, is you just write it down. What's the Lord saying to me to do? And then he says, make it plain on tablets. So, not, in other words, to make it plain means it can't be something complicated or something you can't remember. It needs to be very clear and easy to grab onto. So it can't be like a huge phrases. As a matter of fact, if there's something that's worth it to you, you should have it written down somewhere. Matter of fact, it might should be even written in your shower. I used to do verses in my shower all the time. I hadn't put one up in a long time, but I probably needed to. I put them in a Ziploc bag and stick, stick them on the wall just so I'd go look at it in the morning when I wake up. And you kind of go like, that's kind of religious. No, it's kind of like me reminding myself that this is life. And as I wake up and try to enter into the world, I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to read that today. 
I'm going to read that for a second. Yeah, that only works if you shower every day, though. But, you know. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> she just revealed some of her hygiene techniques. Keeping it real. Oh, my gosh. I shower every day, so twice a day yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I was talking about me. It's not the best thing for your skin. It's not the best thing for your skin, but write it down, make it plain. So you've got to be able to understand it, that he may run with it who reads it. So next part is to carry it with you every day. As you're waking up and as you're moving through your day, it's carrying this vision with you, thinking about it. I mean, you don't think, the things that I think about, like this is what I think about when I think about refinery and I think about, I don't think about ministry. I don't think people that I have to like take care of. I think about like what would happen if this one couple would all of a sudden catch the vision to reach just the people they have influence with? Just what would happen? What would happen if three families caught that and did it together? That's what I think about all the time. All the time I'm thinking about what would happen. Because listen, we're all, we're all, if you're born again in Jesus, you're full of the Holy Spirit, you've got the ability to lead and to bring people to greater places. Even the man who just got saved and got delivered in Mark 5 from all the demons, his testimony was, I ran around here for 38 years, didn't know any. I was a, a, a fear to everybody. When everybody saw me, they ran, and I cut myself and did all this stuff. He says, but now I met Jesus, and he made me whole. That's plenty to talk about right there. You mean, yeah, I know you. I saw you for 38 years doing that. I know who you were. And Jesus, he says, yeah, but and Jesus is the one who touched me. You don't need much more theology behind that than the life of Jesus coming in and touching that place. So if you ask me what I meditate on every day, I meditate on this type of stuff. I meditate on, Lord, what is it? What would it be that when we involve people in our life on a normal basis, not as a program? See, this is the hardest thing that you're going to work against, and we as a church will work against, is we're working against the set mindset that Sunny morning from a particular time to a particular time is when it all happens. And I know we talk about that and say that's not true, but we vote that way in our attendance. Or we don't vote our way that in our attendance. Or it's not a commitment to us. And what I want us to do is move into real life, like move into life, not move into religion or move into something I have to do. Grasp. I mean, you didn't have to tell the demoniac in Mark 5, to wake up and think about Jesus. Come on. 38 years. Can anybody, has anybody been in something for so long that you can think back and go, I'm released of that. And I'm different. So this is the thing. So Habakkuk saying, write it down, make it plain so everybody can read it. And then he says, so that you can actually work with it every day. So chapter, verse 3, and then we're going to, I want to move on to exactly our vision for what we're doing here. Verse 3 says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end of it, it will speak and it will not lie. Now, the most exciting part of vision is when you first start. The most difficult part about vision is when you get to the center, to the center point before you're accomplishing what you've been called to. And so all of you today are, if you've been in some particular point of your life where you started something and now you're here on something and the end is over here, a lot of times we lose our gusto because we forget what it was like. We don't have the momentum out of the beginning and we don't have the momentum for seeing the end. So we're out here somewhere, which is the most dangerous place. So even right now, personally, for everybody, offensively in your life, you may want to stop and go, okay, this is where I started, this is where I was going, and I'm sticking out here somewhere, and I've kind of forgot what I'm supposed to be doing here. And so part of that is we're kind of re-envisioning and wait for it because it might take a minute. 
it's been, tw I went to seminary in 1999, 2000, and I had these same thoughts then. The exact same thoughts. Wait for it. There's an appointed time for it all to come forth. And so personally to encourage you in your own life is wait for it. Wait for it because there's an appointed time for it to come forth. But we can't lose hope in the middle of all this. So refinery, what we're doing is we're moving forward in gather groups in the homes. And so what we're doing is, is we're going to be meeting here first Sundays, kind of like what we've been doing. First Sundays, we're going to get together like a family. We're going to worship and we're going to have a meal afterwards, and we're going to begin to just chase after the Lord in this. Now, before we kind of move further, I want to pull Ceci up here real quick. Where are you at? Come give a testimony on just your gather group, um, like what's impacted you there. Because I think we have to catch what people are experiencing um, in order to... Yeah, you always want to squeeze. Hi. Well, I'm Ceci. Well, Cecilia, but you can call me Ceci. And I started coming to the refinery on and off for a couple of years. And I would just come in and I would just sit on the second row and I would drink my coffee and I wouldn't talk to anybody. I was like, I don't know anyone here. And um, I remember after COVID and everything, gather groups started and Luke and Laura that were living here at the time invited us to gather group. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is not a dream. Like I was freaking out. <laughs> I didn't know anyone. So I was like, okay, I really am about to walk into someone I don't know, into their house, and just, like, chill and, like, you know, worship together. So it was a bit scary at first, but I found myself really looking forward to that. And then I found my community there, and it was just awesome. I felt connected, and then I had people walking alongside me, praying over me. And um, it really transformed me, and it just fast forward my walk because I had people with me. And little by little, I started shedding things. I was like, well, let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about this. Please pay for this. And um, it's really transforming. I felt like I found my family. And I don't know if it would have, it probably would have taken me longer had I not gone to gather group. So it's just really transformed my life, my marriage. And it's just been really awesome. And I love my people. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> We love Ceci. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of testimonies in there, but I want you to hear from folks who have been experiencing group um, because it's important, it's, it's just important to understand that there's, there's more in this room than actually what's happening. I mean, right. I see more in this room than what's actually going on. Right, and I think the point she made was really good, whether by choice or just the way it works out. You know, a lot of times we can just walk in and be here for an hour, hour and a half, whatever, and walk back out and never be known by anyone. And that doesn't necessarily, we're, we're not, like, let me just make this really clear, we're not like bashing corporate gatherings on Absolutely a regular basis. Uh -uh. I think they're phenomenal. As a matter of fact, of all the staff, I still struggle with it a little bit of, of like saying, we're not going to meet every Sunday. Like I know some of you, you know, feel that way too. So we, it definitely has a place, and it definitely has a purpose. So I just want to make that really clear. We're not, like, saying that. But we're just saying for us, our DNA looks a little different. And for us, we want that transformation that Ceci has had and other people have had in everyone's life. And, and so, yeah, but what, it, you know, we were talking about this earlier. I was like, so what if I, I mean, I'm not, you know me, you know it, I'm not. But what if I'm the person that doesn't want to be known? What if I'm the person that wants to do that, but I still want to be a part of the refinery? Like, what does that look like for me? And, and I think, you know, when we were talking, part of that is, is you've got to understand the importance of being known. You know, whenever, like Ceci said, like when she's struggling with something, she has people that now know her and they can pray for her. They can check on her during the week. It encourages not only her, but it gives her hope. Where sometimes when we're just by ourselves, we only have our perspective, we only have our thoughts, and we don't have one, someone to come alongside us and encourage us and say, "Hey, did you look at it this way? Did you think about it this way?" And and we have that accountability, we have that encouragement that we have from each other. And so, 
you know, it's, there's times when we need to be alone. Like Jesus went along a way to be alone, but he always came back. He was always with others. And I think that's all we're saying. It's like, yeah, there's time to be alone and there's times to be in big crowds and there's times to be, you know, with smaller groups and people. And our thought and our, you know, heart is just like, we just feel like the biggest transformation can happen in those settings. And so that's why we're kind of moving in this or continuing in this direction. Yes. So, I mean, what it's going to look like as we move forward, we'll have first Sundays we'll meet here and then the other weeks we'll be in homes. Um, and so we're planting a couple of new groups. Um, specifically, we're going to plant, um, there's one in Leland at some point, and then there's going to be one we're going to host one at our house just for a couple of weeks in order to get it going. So we're going to pull some folks in and kind of begin planning one out of that place. Well, I want to clarify. I mean, we're, we're opening that up for anyone who yes. is not presently connected or maybe you've gone to a group. and I mean, not, not all group fits each person's needs. And so that's why we encourage you. Like, if you go to a group and that one's not fitting, you're not, like, kind of gelling, that's fine. No one's going to be offended try another group. And so that's the other thing. Like maybe you've tried a group and you are like, no, that wasn't a great fit for me. You can come to this too. And what our goal is, is to birth a couple of more gather groups out of this, which I know takes, you know, we were talking earlier, if you're a host, it takes a responsibility. If you're a facilitator, you don't have to carry it all though. Like the the most successful groups are the ones that divvy it up because you don't get burned out. Um, you know, you might host, someone else may facilitate, someone else may be organizing the kids, someone else may be helping set, figure out the worship. So, and, and we're there to help you in this whole process. Um, so before you leave today, if you are not connected, want to get connected, want to try it out, just come see Mark or I and we'll kind of get you set up for that. So Yeah, and there'll be some admin parts that come forward as we go too as well. So there'll be ways for people that can get connected a lot easier. So There'll be some admin that'll come, maybe some changes on our website where you actually can go to a location and look at it and go like, I want to contact a person in this location um, and, and be a part there. Um. Yeah. One, one other thing I just want to address real quick is kids. That's always the big question when we're meeting in homes because here it's not, it's not an issue. You come, you drop a kid off, you come in here, you know, whatever. And again, nothing wrong with that, but when we're meeting in homes, it looks a little different. And so um, we value kids immensely. Um, so, I mean, we value everyone immensely, but, you know, we're definitely at very, we consider ourselves very, you know, like kid friendly. We've, if you don't know, we've had five kids. They kind of went with us everywhere we went. And so um, it, a part of their life is, has always been just going where we're going. And and so gather groups makes it look a little different. Um, and it can, that might even look different from group to group. So um, most of the groups that, that have children in them, the kids are in there during worship. And so sometimes it gets a little loud. And sometimes it's, you know, there's a kid climbing over the back of the couch. And, and, and I think part of that is just adjusting of what is okay. You know, Jesus didn't deny the littles, as we said earlier. Yeah. And so... I think part of that is just going, you know, maybe you that's not the mom goes over and grabs a puzzle and sits down with the kid or just knowing that it's going to be okay. And believe me, I know when my, our kids were little and Mark will attest to this, if we were in a situation where we thought the kids were supposed to be quiet and they started getting rowdy, he was very quick to scoop that child and run out because he didn't want to yeah. disturb what was going on. But we want to change that perspective. It's not disturbing. Now, if the child is laying on the floor kicking and screaming, yes, that you might want to take them out. You can't even hear the worship. But if they're playing and they're talking or, you know, maybe talking a little loud, then find the joy in that. I think it's that whole thing back to perspective and refreshment. Find the joy in that. And yeah, I think the difference that. is going to be this. is that Listen, when you, come to, um, when you come to a gathering, you come to serve, so the biggest thing is we have to get us out of the center of the equation um, and put us on the outside l looking to serve somebody. So even whenever I'm coming into something and it's kind of frustrating me or it's kind of like going like, 
I'm not getting what I want. This should be a different way. They should sing a particular way or something else should happen. It's you're affecting my worship. You know, those type of things can run through your head and you start going like, wait a minute, what, like, what am I even thinking here? And so you have to let that, you've got to get in there and dig in on that place because you're going to have to give yourself permission as we kind of move through things, permission to go like, this is a good thing. Because our children are in the presence of the Lord. And they even be even though they're not actually even, they may not be singing, they may be playing something, they are picking it up and, un, and things are being deposited within our children as they're in the presence of the Lord and as we're walking with Him in that spot, things are being deposited within them. And it's important um, that they be a part of that whole thing. Um, so, the other thing is... Um, is it, this is like this commitment to kind of doing church this way. Is there just a cost to it as well? A cost in the sense that it's, you look around and go like, you know, people kind of forget. They go like, oh, well, do we need to tithe? Do we need to give? Do we need, like, what's it all going for? And are we still keeping the building? So we're still keeping the building because it's part of it. And so part of this is it's a sacrifice to just say, hey, we're going to do church this way. We're going to do church this way and not another way. Um, and so part of that sacrifice is, if, you know, you can tithe online. You can also give. Um, you can tithe online. You can give in your group. Um, but literally we're trying to create these, these hubs of people that you can invite in and begin to disciple and walk with. And as a leadership, I'm here, Ovella's here, and Kenny and Heather, we're here to help shape the leadership within each group, but we're available. But we also are aware that you have the DNA and the makings to bring people in, lead them to the Lord, and walk with them. Because listen, that's what is, that's at the end of the day what this is all about. The Christian experience is not about me feeling okay about my existence here until I get to heaven. It's not that. The experience with Jesus is the demoniac that is 38 years one way, and then all of a sudden he's completely different. He goes, I don't know what to do, but I have to keep giving this to somebody else. And it can be done in such a way that it's done in family and done well. I mean, think about this. Think about if you decided your group didn't even want to meet on Sundays. You said, we don't, we don't even want to meet on Sundays. We'd like to meet on Saturdays, or we'd like to meet Friday nights. Okay. Amazing. I'm still recording a message during the week. You're able to pick it up, and you go like, well, this time it didn't work. We'd rather meet on Sunday nights. We'd rather go to the beach all day, and we'd rather meet on the beach. Okay. Great. Do it. Like, do life and let Jesus come in and be a part of all this, as opposed to putting him in a little compartment over here and saying, hey, here you are right here. That's a great place for you to be. Now I can live the other six days and, you know, 22 hours a different way. So be creative as well. Like, be creative. Don't, don't let this thing put you back in a box. Let it open up your horizons and go, like, I've got permission to, like, be this way and to walk and live this way. Because that's what's going to change people. When you carry the Lord in such a way that the excitement and the goodness of Him is coming out of your pores. As opposed to going like, let me invite you to something so somebody else can say something. And we're going to have people saying something. There's going to be a consistent message. There's going to be worship in our gatherings and food. But still, it doesn't. There's more to it. Right. Um, and he just mentioned at the end, food. We, I mean... All jokes aside, we really do feel like, you know, sharing a meal together is really important, and it's something that um, gives you time just to sit and chat. If, if you have a group with small kids, you know, they're usually starving and grumpy, and if you are able to feed, you know, let them eat, they usually will get like a second win, and so they can hang. So as family, you can hang. So if you're planning on coming to our group next week, bring a, bring a side, because we will be having a potluck. So I'm just I'm announcing that in case someone online is watching and they're planning on showing up. So we will definitely be hanging and eating and probably playing cornhole and just hanging after our um, time together in worship and in the Word. So um, This is going to be organic with administration. How about that? Organic with administration. So 
it's going to be as organic as we want it to be, but yet it's going to have enough definition to it to be sure that we accomplish the goal and get to the end. Right. So um, just to, more, yeah, I was going to say, um, just to, we want everyone to be excited about this. I know this is probably like you're coming in and you're like, oh, I really wanted a, you know, a message, but I think Whoa, 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 whoa. They got a message. I know whoa, they did. Whoa. I know. I There's know. enough in those okay. two verses right there. I know. If everybody sits on those two verses. Oh. I know, but people Hello. avoid missions. It's pregnant. You know, vision Sunday. Let's whoa, just get whoa, real. It's pr- yeah. <laughs> It's pregnant. I can just tell you this. You read those two verses in there and be careful. Okay, okay, okay. Because no, that's sure what I was life. going to say. You give me three more seconds. That it is a valuable, like, everyone has vision for their life. So this was very applicable across the board. But as far as for the refinery's vision, I, we want this excitement. We want Emily to come up just real quick yeah. and share. She just kind of had, like, a moment, and I don't know. So we want to let her share her. She does have a lot of moments. I have a lot of moments. Hey, I'm Emily. Um, so where am I standing? Okay, sorry. Um, so I'm also on staff, and we've been, like, processing gather group, and I've been hosting one at my house um, for a little bit. I've been a part of it from the beginning. And I had to drive to Leland, past Leland. I don't actually really know where I went. Um, but I just kind of got this overwhelming feeling of giddiness. And I was like, what is this, Lord? And he was just, like, reminding me, like, what value is. And he goes, if you value something, you prioritize it, and you make sacrifices for it. And I was like, yeah, what do I value? And I just have seen so much value in in gather groups. And I'm so excited. I've, like, I mean, Ceci even said, like, she's been there, and, like, I've been, like, loving seeing the growth there and um, being able to be part of that. But just like, y'all, like what the Lord has for the refinery and gather groups is just like one of those things you're just like, you want to jump on because it's so good. I'm just like super excited. <laughs> I don't know. If that, yeah. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 11.34 and we need to stop. <clears throat> um, so we want to kind of get, there's so much more to say. Um, it'd be better we catch coffee and talk more um, over that. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to hear more, just grab coffee with one of us, or, or and we can share some more. Or with even some of these people who are in groups, grab exactly. coffee with them too. So, or if you have any questions. But this is the one time we didn't do a meal. So I, we encourage you today, grab some friends and go to lunch, or grab somebody you don't know and go to lunch. Even better, and get and hang out and enjoy each other. Um, but let me pray for us. Yeah. Oh, Father. Um, Lord, we're so grateful for your goodness over us. And the vision you place within us gives us the ability to, to play offense in our personal lives. We have the ability to offensively wake up in the morning and move towards something. As so, a follow right now, I just ask that every person in here would be envisioned with um, what you have for them personally, Lord, for their influence, for where they are in the world, for their jobs, for their family, for new beginnings, new startings, that you would just open their hearts up and just say, and just begin to speak to them. As they stand there waiting to hear what you have to say, you'd begin to open that up to them, or you would rekindle it, you'd breathe back on it again. Father, as we as you open that vision back up to us that um, we would continue to take it and we would write it down and we would meditate upon it so that it would so that it would come forth and that we wouldn't be discouraged in the in-between time that we would be able to wait and wait for it and wait for it and continue to play offense continue to wake up and play towards the goal and play towards the end and not just hope something good happens but to wake up and apprehend the vision that's been put in front of us as a Father, thank you for this particular time in, in, in our country, in this particular time in our world that you've placed us in, that you've said that you've called us to be this way and to run this way. Because we know that where you're calling things to in in particular times and spaces, that you're also bringing forth the, the fruit and the life and the provision. And so we just bless that today. God, thank you for your goodness. I thank you for family here today. I thank you for the blessing 
of family, the blessings of the ones that are to our left and to our right, the ones that sit across from us at the table. Father, I love it because we can get together again as family. It can be weeks and we get back together and we don't, we don't even lose a beat. We don't, we're not frustrated. We're not dishonored. We're just excited to see the person again. And so we just bless you today. We love you in Jesus' name. All right. Have an amazing week. See you in gather groups next week.